specifically, how is Jason Kelly expecting to turn things around? I've really been trying to closely follow the trajectory of Yanko Bioworks. And despite the fact that the 140 stock split that Jason Kelly had enacted was really, in his words, to give more confidence to potential investors of Ginkgo Bioworks, I really feel like it's not going to do much to actually sway someone else from either deciding to invest or not. Because Jason has to really come to terms and grips with the fact that all of the financial institutions, which before were either neutral, which before had either maintained a neutral or a buying perspective on uh, or a position on Ginkgo Bioworks, they've now, they've now all upgraded that position to sell. And I think if I remember correctly, out of those financial institutions, only Morgan Stanley is the one that had actually downgraded the stock from $2 to $1. And as we know from the price of Ginkgo Bioworks stock before the one for 40 stock split was enacted, $1 for Ginkgo Bioworks stock is a pretty unrealistic target at this point. And I'm not obviously sure about all of the types of aspects that this financial institution had kept into mind or factored in when they're trying to reduce or you know lower the outlook or the expected price of Ginkgo Bioworks from $2 to $1. But all of the other financial institutions had pretty much been in the 20 to 30 cent range. And even though Ginkgo Bioworks and uh, their Class A shares, which if I remember correctly, is the stock that's listed on the stock exchange right now, if they have their Class A shares at like, you know, $8 or $9, I forgot to check the stock today, but you know, say like, we can give some benefit of the doubt to Jason Kelly, even though he doesn't really deserve it. Let's say it's like nine fifty or ten dollars to be, you know, just for the sake of argument. If they continue just going on this trajectory, then eventually the stock split cash is gonna just crash too. And then what is Jason kind of Kelly gonna do in that situation? Is he just gonna order another stock split? Jason, I recommend you do another one for forty. So then really it's like a one for sixteen hundred stock split. So then that's what you really should have done from the beginning, Jason, because all of this, all of these types of cosmetic changes that you're trying to perform with regards to the stock and what the stock split is, it's not going to do anything to change the overall outlook of your company. The fact that you guys had to change your approach to operation, you know, to operations within your company and get rid of so many people, people are always going to talk about this, Jason. It's not a controversial topic to say that you guys had maybe at the very least allegedly made a lot of misjudgment with regards to how you can place certain types of employees within different commercial pursuits in your company. And you guys are now, you guys have now been saying like for the past year or year and a half, because if I remember, you know, I watch, I watch pretty much all of your quarterly updates several times on YouTube to really study and parse what you say and how it actually changes over time. Because even I'd made a video about asking, why do you backtrack and change your statements so much, Jason? And a lot of people saw it and agree with me through the likes and comments on that video. And it really goes to show like you guys have been saying like for the past at least year that you expect the pharmaceutical sector to really play a big role in the upcoming growth cycle for Ginkgo Bioworks. But in this slower than expected revenue ramp that we've had in the past year, it hasn't really played so much of a role. And Jason Kelly is never going to mention or talk about the fact that Serving pharmaceutical clients is very difficult, but it's difficult not for the reason that he said, because Jason Kelly has said that it's difficult to get these types of deals because he really had to build up the foundry for like 10 years. And I mean, sure, that's a legitimate type of statement or, you know, thing to say with regards to, um, with regards to, you know, um, with regards to how difficult it is to structure those type of deals. But there are a lot of other types of difficulties, which is kind of like the Achilles heel of the whole commercial structure that Ginkgo Bioworks has been operating on this whole time. And that's resulting from the fact is that so many pharmaceuticals and different types of clients, you know, you can see like a lot of oncology companies, like for looking at computational modeling of cancer or other types of, you know, invasive diseases or, you know, like how melanoma or other types of, you know, related cancers can form. A lot of them have had to perform bankruptcy because even if they have some encouraging initial product and some initial step, taking it through the complete pipeline, it's a completely different story. And I can even very pretty much speak to this now because we have an NSF grant that's still in the in under consideration and we have received, you know, some helpful, you know, um, some, you know, some uh, positive type of reinforcement to actually be able to submit another, you know, another version with revisions and that those process for, um, you know, being able to, um, you know, talk with various government agencies and regulatory authorities, it takes a very long time. But Jason's never going to mention that because then 
it would probably most likely make people lose even more confidence than what they've already lost in his whole pharmaceutical area, the business of Ginkgo Bioworks.